Okay, last session you studied London by William Blake. These are the three trigger words that led into your th three key quotations. Now have a go at recalling those three key quotations and stretch yourself further by trying to recall the five W's of the poem and linking the key quotations into that storyline. Okay, you've already studied one sonnet this unit, and hopefully you will recall that sonnet as Sonnet 43, about um, a woman's undying love for her husband. And now you're going to read another sonnet, a sonnet that's written to express love, but not for a person in particular, but for a place, for a country. Rupert Brooke was a soldier. And before he saw battle, he believed that the idea of dying for your country was a noble and wonderful thing to do. So he put together this sonnet to express his undying love for his country. OK, so we have some relevant context here, which I touched on briefly in the last slide. Relevant context is important because we can use it when analysing the poem. It's not just bolt on information. It is relevant information that we can actually build into our analysis. Now, Rupert Brooke was one of many poets, OK, in World War One, in the early years of World War One, that wrote these verses about how wonderful it was to die for your country, how proud you should be of doing this. However, What's interesting here is Brooke never actually took part in war. OK, he died of an infection in 1915 before he actually got to fight. So he did talk about how wonderful it was to die during the war, but he never actually experienced how horrible the war was firsthand. And I think what's interesting later on in the shoot is you will study a poem in which the poet himself, Wilfred Owen, talks about how horrible it is to die during wartime. And so it paints a very different view of this wonderful um, image of dying for your country that's presented in this particular poem. At the bottom of this slide, there is a YouTube link to a fantastic reading of this poem. I hope you enjoy it. OK, so these are your th three key quotations that you need to learn in order to best analyse the poem, in order to best tell the story of the soldier. And we'll go through these three quotations now briefly um, before you move on and do your, your work on the following slides. So the first quotation we'll consider is some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. He considers the idea of his own death considers the possibility of his own death and says, you know, actually, it's not such a bad thing to happen because if I die in a foreign field, OK, I'm bringing some good to that land. You know, my blood can soak into the soil and I'm going to leave a little bit of England in that soil. And as we know, England is a wonderful place and we'll be able to bring some of that wonder to another country. There's also a suggestion in there as well that he'll live forever because of this, that he will have contributed something um, to the world, maybe, by, be, by being part of a battle in, in which the English would win. It's very accepting, isn't it? And it's very, it's very important with this quotation to show that he doesn't fear dying for his country. He, he thinks it is a noble, wonderful thing to do. The next quotation is interesting because a dust whom England bore shaped made aware gives England um, a personality. It, it turns England into his mother because a mother bears us, shapes us, makes us aware, just like England has done for him. Um, therefore, he, he feels like he owes England, just like we would feel like we owed our mother for our lives. And so we might feel protective 
of armor, then we might feel protective of our country. Dust could also suggest, well, you know, I'd be nothing without without England. You know, I, England is what made me what I am. And the final quotation worth looking at is a pulse in the eternal mind, the idea of eternal, the idea of living forever. So we don't necessarily just end with death, depending upon what your belief systems are. Um, with Brooke, he felt that, you know, there would be an afterlife, that you would live on after death. So he wouldn't just be enriching the earth with his blood, but he would be living on in the memory uh, of people. He would be living on in spirit, be a religious element there. And he considers himself small, a small pulse in a huge, huge, big picture, the eternal mind. But everything is, you know, everything comes together to make up the whole, doesn't it? So he's a small part in the whole, so therefore he's still really, really important. Okay, well done in negotiating your way through a difficult poem today. It is one of the more difficult poems in the anthology. So, you know, feel free to go back through this PowerPoint, feel free to go back through the work, attempt it a second time. But you should be good to go with these three key quotations, field, dust and eternal being your trigger words. So spend some time now trying to learn your key quotations by, and using the trigger words um, as the main word that you will use to recall the quotation in future exercises in lesson. Um, but also spend some time looking at the five W's again and trying to weave these key quotations into, into the storyline of the poem. Um, thank you very much.